Allow me to get into God's word. I'm excited to be here. Every time I come into this place, there's something, just something different that uh, um, you get to feel. For those of us that don't know where we are coming from, I am not ignorant. There could be people who don't know that we have a main campus. If you don't know about the main campus, the main campus is just across the road on the other side. That is uh, the rock from which this congregation has been healed. Uh, so we, we come with the blessings of our, our bishop and the leadership of DCIKZ, even from the main campus. Amen. Amen. We, we, today we want to talk on the subject of giving. Now, um, I, I am not um, going to talk about giving because... Um, it's because this is what we are talking about. Let me not say a lot of things. But also say that uh, I know we have come from a season where we talked about giving. Yeah. But I like the story that is told by one of the preachers. Um, of, of, of this preacher who was hired by the board of uh, the church. And he came in, and the very first time that he came in, he had impressed the board that he's a powerful, fiery preacher. And when he came in, his first sermon um, that he preached was the second sermon that he preached the second Sunday, and the third Sunday, and the fourth Sunday, and the fifth, and the sixth. Now, at that point, the board felt like, did we make a mistake? Is it possible that this guy has no other sermon in his life? And he was just talking about this one subject. And so he was called uh, by the board after their service. And the question that he was asked was, Pastor, very powerful. First Sunday, second Sunday, third, fourth, sixth Sunday, you're preaching about the same thing. Don't you have anything else to talk about? And you know what the pastor said? Once I see the application of that very first service, someone that I preached, then I'll stop preaching on the same someone. I'm not saying that uh, that is what we are doing. Um, but it is, it is important for us to talk about giving. Now, I want to, um, as we talk about giving, to just allow us to think when we talk about giving, and, and especially in church, we, many of us, again, depending on where we are coming from, we feel like this is a subject that we need to go slow on God's people. This is a subject that we need to let people have their, 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 their say, and it's true. Um, this, there's always a feeling like ah, giving again. But I want to say this, that giving is very, very important. God, God cares about our giving. It matters to God that we give. Giving is a form of worship for you and for me. Just like we spent our energies and we gave ourselves as we were singing and worshiping the Lord, the Lord desires that we worship him with our substances. Allow me also to say this, that we who are the church today, we have been called by God to be the agents. We, we are the people that God is using to do whatever he wants in this world at this particular time. Now, if you didn't know that you are in this space because God has an assignment for you, please hear from me that God is not going to use other people. He's depending on you. So that wherever he has placed you, in that school, in that place of work, wherever God has placed you, he cannot work without you. Of course, he can, but he has chosen to work with you in that place. So every time you are not doing what God has called you to do, God is not at work. God wants us to go out and witness. God wants us to reach whoever is unreached. God wants us to disciple people. And, and let me tell you, discipling is not, is not cheap. You know, the gospel has to be preached. 
and the gospel is it was freely given to us but there is a difference between free and cheap ah it was salvation has been freely given to us but it is not cheap it costed the son of god and there was nothing else in the entire wide world that would have taken the place of Jesus because that wouldn't have made it. Not the entire universe. Had it been given for our salvation, it wouldn't have matched. So you're imagining the entire world couldn't pay for your salvation. The only sufficient payment for our salvation was the life of God himself. So the work that we are doing is not cheap. It is free. We will give it free to whoever, but it's not cheap. And so we need to be equipped. We need to fund the work that is happening. We need to give towards God's work. Now, that is not my message, though. My message today is, is, is on giving. And um, I want to just you know, bring us to a place where we need to understand why we need to give. Giving to God's work or giving into the kingdom. And I'll pick a couple of admonitions from the scriptures that requires you and me to give. Well, I know that we, 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 we are young people and young people don't have money. That is not true. Young people think it is their parents who have money. It is not true. Well, it could be true. Your parents could be having money. But you also have your money. And, and I'm also, when I'm addressing the issue of giving here, I want us to give, or I want us to address the issue of the substance that you have worked for, that you have put energies to, and you are paid wages, or you are paid um, allowances. I don't know what's the difference. Or you are paid salaries. Because these are the giving, by the way. We have no problem. We have no problem with giving ourselves to coming to church. <laughs> we have no problem with giving ourselves for missions. <laughs> We have, but every time we touch that coin, that shilling, or the, that, that dollar, <laughs> yeah? every time we touch your wallet, you, are, you have a problem. So I want to major on that. Ah, look at your neighbor. <laughs> but because we need it for this work. We need it for the gospel. And, and when we talk about scriptures admonishing us or admonishing us, we're simply saying there is a scripture that is addressing this need. An admonition is, is a placing of an idea in your mind that it is constantly there. You know the way we think about things, and, and I know there could be people here right now you're thinking about, <laughs> yeah, thinking about this service, yes, but you're also thinking about something else. There's an idea in your mind. There's something in your mind. You're thinking about, ah, yes, how am I going to go about this assignment? And I'm saying that because most of us maybe could be students here. You have a paper that you need to hand in. Ikotumahali, in your mind, it is placed there. Some of us is that person that we are relating with. And anakani kama anakuja. Anakuja tuivi. Unanza, eh? They're constantly lodging in your mind. <laughs> scripture admonishes us. Scripture places giving in your mind. And there is no way we're going to ignore. You know, somebody who is thinking about something, you might ignore what you're thinking about, but I tell you for a fact that you're going to act accordingly. You're going to act in answer you're going to act to whatever the thought or the whatever idea is leading you. And so, an admonition is that placing. So, scripture places that idea in our minds. You could also say an admonition is, is being cancelled. So, scripture cancels us to give. Scripture um, uh, instructs us to give would be another, another way of, of saying. And so, I want to look at 
Just a couple of admonitions from uh, scripture. And then we will look at the benefits, hopefully. And then uh, we will be done. And I don't want to tell you how many because, because uh, I, I am looking at our time. And our time is good, by the way. First of the, uh, the well, number one of the admonitions that we, got, we get from the scripture, we get it from a scripture that we all know, the book of Malachi and chapter number three from verses number 10. The admonition that we get thereof, or the call, if you want, or um, the, 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 the persuasion that is coming from Scripture is bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. Yeah. I, I saw NIV when we were singing, and, but now this is HSCCS, whatever. Yeah, give us NIV. Thank you. Malachi chapter 3 and verse number 10. It says, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be not enough room for you to store. You know? It is not an idea, it is not, it is not your idea, it is not um, if you, you want, it is that is going to happen. Scripture is saying this is what is going to happen. And you know when scripture says, and I like, um, I think I've heard this is it from Pastor Brian, when, when the scripture says something, please your view is relegated to, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't count. You have it, but it doesn't count. When scripture says something, we receive it. And so we are called to bring. We are called to bring our tithes into the storehouse. Please, tithes don't begin when we get employed. Tithing does not begin when we get married. Tithing does not begin when we own a business. Tithing begins when we have faith. You know, scriptures would talk about um, um, Abraham giving a tithe to Melchizedek. And you know, the argument that we have had, and we talked about this over, over and over, people argue, is it of the Old Testament? Is it of the New Testament? Where is it? Before the law came, Abraham was, and he meets this king of Salem, and he gives a tenth. He gives a tithe. And if, if, if you and I would remember that Abraham is called the father of faith, that would mean that the things that Abraham did were of faith. One of them was giving the tithe. So rest this debate of you know, arguing, is it of the law? Is it in the New Testament? And, I, and, and many times I ask myself this, because when we get, I said we are talking about what? You are? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're talking about your money. When we get there, that's when we have a lot, of, a, a lot of arguments. The names that we give to Jehovah, for example, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Jehovah, Jehovah. You trace those names. Tell me whether they were of the law. It's because God appeared to his people and he manifested as their healer. It was a faith. They believed God and so today in the 21st century, we are still saying Jehovah Rapha. But when we come to tithing, <laughs> you'd as well want to forget Jehovah Rapha. So we are called, we are admonished to bring the tithe into the storehouse. And when we are bringing the tithe, we bring the whole tithe. <laughs> You know that? Is it the gross? Is it the... Is it the... Do you know that we cannot... We, I, I'm not sure we are not as faithful as we think we are when it comes to tithing. 
Because if you're thinking about what you have received, and you're supposed to give a tithe on it, then you realize that when scripture talks about robbers, <laughs> they're just seated next to us, isn't it? the gifts that you got from people, when somebody paid your bus fare, when somebody took you out for supper, for, is this supper, for dinner, for, for that coffee date. And some of us, even a tithe of the time that God has given us, we don't want to give it to him. So that we have to push you, come for Monday prayers, come for midweek service, come for... And, and even Sunday service, for some of us, you have to be called, uh, where are you? You haven't woken up. Imagine it is eight. And we're just here for two hours. Now, what is a tithe in terms of time? And I say that I, want, I don't want us to get there because when we get there, then it's a whole uh, different story. But there is need for you to give the whole tithe. There is need for you to give the whole tithe. And scripture would say, we do this as we obey. We do this in obedience to God's word because it is required of us. And when we do that, a lot of things happen and we don't have time to look at uh, those benefits that are outlined there. But they are good benefits. Some of us, the struggles that we have is because there were certain devourers that came. Every time you receive money, and I don't know whether that happens to you. And, and I'm, I'm saying this is an issue for all of us. The, there's a time I struggled with tithe. Not because I didn't want, I wanted, but I, I, had, I had reasons. Hello, somebody. <laughs> I, had, I had reasons. Money wasn't enough. Allah. It seemed like there was a lot of other things to do every time I got money. <laughs> Some of the reasons why we don't give is because We don't have enough money. So you have enough money for yourself to do all the things that you want to do, but not enough to give. And that is a lie from the devil. Some of us don't give because we actually don't know where the money goes. <laughs> have you been in, into that place where <laughs> you know where your money goes. If you just sit for a moment, you will know where your money goes. If you don't know, then that's disaster. Growing up, um, I had a very, very wonderful dad. Now he has rested, and may his soul rest in peace. But my dad was this kind of man. Coming from school those days, and our school days were not like today. You know, today schools, they have all sorts of things. They have, they have all sorts of games. They are actually taken for swimming, they are taken for skiing, they are taken for um, all those fancy, fancy games. In our days, fighting was part of our games. <laughs> and so we fought a lot. We fought, and you would fight like twice in a day. <laughs> so you're going home, and because you engage with men, there is just something that happened to your face. But you know it was part of life. So you're going home and you cannot even remember that you fought. So your dad asks, what, what happened to your face? You're like, where? <laughs> so you do not know that you have a problem with your face? This is not the way you left in the morning. So you're like, oh. <laughs> My dad required that you know what happened to you. In the event you didn't know, that would warrant a beating. It simply means you need to account for your life. Now, some of us, when we say, <laughs> we don't know where the money goes, you're simply telling us, I don't account for my money. And I want to help you. If you want to know where your money goes, look at your impressor. Just one way of knowing where your money goes. Part of the reasons that's why we don't give it's because we don't believe. We are believers, 
Yes, we believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, but we don't believe. In actual fact, we are pagans. In the book of, of, of uh, Luke chapter number 6, and I want us to get... Uh, but before we do that, allow me to say um, that the admonition number two, uh, which is what I'm actually dwelling on right now, is that all of our scripture supposes, tells us that we can afford not just to give a tithe, but also to give offerings. Let me also say this, that when we, we give our tithes, Scripture says, pay your tithes, pay your bills, pay your house rent, pay your income tax, pay your licenses, pay for your driving license. Do we have discussions when we get to those things? So there is another pay your tithe. But when we get there, we are like, ah, ah, goja hii tithe wacha tuonge. Ah, it's pay. Now, together with that, we are in a place where we should be able, and scripture presupposes this, that we should be able to pay our tithes and give offerings. Allow us to get into the book of Luke chapter number 12, verses number 22 through to, is a lengthy, very lengthy uh, portion of scripture. Um, it says this, Verse 22, then Jesus said to his disciples, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, the, what you will eat, or about your body, what you wear. Life is more than food and the body more than clothes, says in verse number 24. Consider the ravens, they do not sow or reap, they have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than the birds. Whom of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life. Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Says verse 27, consider how the lilies grow. They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you, not even Solomon in his splendor was dressed like one of these. Says in verse number 28, if that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you? Oh, you of little faith, says in verse number 29, and do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it, it says verse number 30. For the pagan world runs after all such things, and your father knows that you need them. And you can continue on and on up to verse number 34. Now, there is, there is a worrying that we do. We worry. We worry about many things. We worry about what we will eat. We worry about what we will wear. In actual fact, some of us, we don't give because we are thinking about food. Can you imagine? Say, nikitoa hii, matakula nini? Nikitoa hii, tutavaa nini? We worry about, and scripture is telling us that we, that life is more than food. You know, that your body is more important than the clothes. It compares us with the birds of the air. How much more are you valuable to God than the birds of the air? That do not do all those things. They don't spend their time worrying. Consider, it says in verse number 27, consider how the wild flowers grow. They are out there in the field. They do not labor. They do not spin. Yet none of us, and, and compares those flowers with Solomon in his splendor. You don't know how Solomon was until you read scripture. It says that Solomon during his days and his reign, and he reigned in Israel for 40, 40 years. His first 20 years were very, very prosperous. But he got into the issue of women. But it also records that Israel, Solomon made gold like stones in Israel. Well, we don't get your splendor. Now, some of us, the gold that we have is, is in our rings, and it is not even pure gold. It's just a mixture of things. Because it's kind of gold. Solomon made it so common. It was like stones in Israel. It says, now, that Solomon cannot be compared 
with the beauty of the flowers out there that God cares for. And they do not worry. They do not care. They do not say, we're not going to do this or that because... And we, it continues on and on and you, you follow through. It says the people who worry about these things are the pagans. Now, we are not pagans, isn't it? We are believers. But why are we acting like pagans? We are believers, and so we need to believe God. Pagans don't. They worry about so many things. Towards uh, the end of that portion of scripture, if you read up to verse number 34, 32 says, Do not be afraid, little folk, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Not just the things that you worry about. He is willing to give you the kingdom. He is pleased to give you the kingdom. It says in verse number 33, Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide passes for yourselves that you will not wear out. It says when we do those things, it's like we are providing passes for ourselves that will not wear out. A treasure in heaven that will never fail. Where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now the things that we treasure, I want to tell you that we pay for them. What were Netflix? You would rather go without food. Lakini subscription to Netflix, my friend. Way! Because you treasure Some of us is a treasure of, 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 of people even. You know, if you treasure somebody, it means your heart is there. <laughs> and needless to say, it is important for those of us who are married, like Pastor Brian, to treasure your wife. So that your heart is there. If you don't treasure and you treasure something else or somebody else, your heart will go. Oh, these things are so easy. I know this is a youth service. One of the ways to get married. Treasure somebody. Say, I don't get the right one. I don't know what they want. They have a lot of requirements and qualifications. They need you to have this. and that. Just treasure somebody. Where your heart is, or where your treasure is, there your heart shall be. Now, if you treasure somebody, you will want to know, uh -huh. <laughs> how, how are you doing? Have you eaten? Where are you? <laughs> they just call you for, you know, you think they are calling you for no apparent reason, but they are calling, where are you? Treasure. Umefika salawa. Ulikula. <laughs> Umenalaji. Slowly by, but surely you will get into the heart of that person. Alright. You don't want to get married. It's okay. <laughs> the look I'm getting from here. Is like <laughs> Let me also tell you this. In your office. In your office. <laughs> where you spend your day in your business, if there is somebody who treasures you, hata kama ni uyo mama ambaya nakuleta yanga chapati, wale watu tuko kwa juwakali, hawa ni watu wa mana sana, hile mama wa uji na chapati. If they treasure you, my friends, be very careful. Hati kila sana kuja, nilifikiria huja kula, nilifikiria. Oh, where well, checker to? Checker. I'm a secretary. Pale Kazini. The tea girl in your office. How is your kasav mutu mingine before kusav? They take care of you. You're very comfortable. They take care of your everything. And you're like, wow. Wow. Before you know it, your heart is gone. So, 
Where you treasure, your heart is. Is it possible for us to treasure the kingdom of God? If we do that, we will not have a problem with giving. We will not have all these discussions that we keep arguing about this or the other. Allow me to give one more other uh, admonition. We are admonished on how to give, not just to give the tithes and offerings, but even on how to give. And scripture says in the book of Luke chapter number 6, it says, verse number 38 of Luke chapter number 6, it says, give, this is the how to give. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. This is the how. Good measure. Give and it will come back to you. The truth is, if you don't give, then there is nothing that is going to come back to you. And I know we will be praying hours on end, Sunday after Sunday. We're praying for this financial breakthrough. But if you're not giving, there is no amount of fasting, there is no amount of prayer that will sort that out. Because it is a principle. Remember, I haven't said the amount. I said just give. It's not in the amount. It is in you, knowing that you're supposed to be giving. So scripture tells us how to do that. Give, and it will be given to you. It will be given a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. As we give, as we give tithes and offerings, because all of us are able to do that, as we pay our tithes, scripture also requires us to be a certain kind of givers. We're not just giving and we come giving grudgingly. Scripture says, be cheerful when you give. So what kind of givers is scripture calling us to be? In, in 2 Corinthians chapter number 9, verse 6 to 7, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not Copy. Not reluctantly or under compulsion, he says, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now, if you give and you're not cheerful about it, then you have missed the mark. You're not the kind of giver that God is calling us to be. God is calling us to be cheerful givers. Not tearful Cheerful givers. It says in verse number 8, And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. So cheerful givers are the givers that God is calling us to be. Don't give and then you go complaining. You have missed it. Be a cheerful giver. Because when you give, and you give cheerfully, what you have decided to give, what you have apportioned to give, in your heart it says, you're not giving under compulsion. You're not told it is 1,000 for every one of us who wants to get a job. No. Give what you have decided. But as you do that, do it cheerfully. Because when you do that, it says God is able to bless us abundantly. Scripture also requires us to bring our gifts. We bring our gifts. It says in First Corinthians chapter number sixteen, and I want to look at verse number. Uh, okay, verse number one and two. It says now about. The collection of the Lord's people. Do what I told the Galatian churches to do. And so this, this addresses the when to give. Scripture tells us even when to give. It says in verse number 2, On the first day 
of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income. It's not just, it is the when. The when we are called to set aside. So that as we come to the service, every day we come, we're not just thinking about giving when we get here. We have thought about it. We set aside. The business people who are here, I am sure you know how much you made in the entire week. Why is it so hard for you to know how much you're going to give? So that you come here and you're like, you're waiting. Please don't wait. Set. Decide what you're going to give. And you know, this is, these are principles. This is a call by scripture. The scripture calls us to pay our tithe. The scripture calls us to not just give tithes, but also offerings. The scripture calls us on the how to do it. The scripture calls us on what kind of givers we need to be. The scripture calls us on when we need to give. So we are without excuse. Like I said, we will talk about this because it is important. It matters to God. Now, giving shows that you believe God. It is not just enough to speak in tongues. It is good to speak in tongues. It is not just enough to you know, sing and dance and jump. It is important to do that. But giving also shows that you believe in God. If you want to know people who don't believe God, they will have a problem with giving. People who don't trust God, they will have a problem with giving. Every time. And it's not just in tithes and offerings and other givings. They will even have a problem with giving in that group where you are. Something has happened. We need to raise this money. And, you know, they don't want to give. Why? They don't believe. Are they born again? Yes but we have a problem with their believing. Giving means that we are in, we are sold out to the vision of the house, we are in support. There is nothing that comes easy. There are no free things, and even those that are free, the marketers that are here, you know, there is a place where you cover the cost of what you're saying is free. Buy one, get one. It is not true. There is nothing that is free. Nothing at all at all. And so I want to call us, please, that you would step up into your giving. That you become the kind of person that God is looking for as a giver. That you become part of of the vision of the house. And you know, the benefits that accrue are yours. You are the person who benefits first and foremost, even before others. We get to make a greater impact in our society. We get to reach out more people. You, we get to do bigger and better things when we have money than when we don't. Given a choice of being in a church that has money and one that has no money, I'll choose the one that has money. So young people have money. Tell your neighbor young people have money. And they have been called to be givers. Because they are the ones who are financing the kingdom. Remember we have said it's not in the how much, it is in the willingness to be part of what is happening. Amen? Amen. If you have gotten saved and you're saying I'm crossing over to be a giver and I'm not asking you to bring money, I'm just asking. If, if, if that meant something for you, if you lift up your hand, we'll just make a prayer for you so that as you purpose to do that, then the backing that comes from God's hand will be yours as we bring this service to a close. Thank you, thank you for that hand. Thank you, thank you, thank you for those hands coming up. Shall we pray together? Father, in the name of Jesus.
want to thank you and to honor you that we we'll talk about the finances, the money that you have given us, the earnings, what we have earned in the course of the week, in the course of the month. And because you're calling us to be givers, we have, each one of us, have a portion to play in the work of God. And so we want to thank you for the hands that went up. I pray that in the name of Jesus, that these ones will consider giving and giving into the work of God as a thing that they need to do because it is important to you. Scripture calls us to do it. And so we honor you and we bless you. We thank you because we know our Father. What we have desired to do as we go out there, you will enable us to do it in the name of the Lord. Allow me to ask, having said that, it is very hard for us to give if we haven't given our lives to the Lord. We start by giving our lives to the Lord and then these other givings becomes easier. It becomes doable. If you have not believed in the only Son of God, Jesus Christ, and given your life to Him in receiving His salvation, it becomes very hard for you even to believe these other things. And so I want to ask, are you there? And you're saying today is a day. You, you came in and you are, you are saying today, if they allow me, I'll give my life to Jesus. Are you there? You want to give your life to Jesus. If you lift up your hand, we'll see it. And we'll pray together with you. If you want to give your life to Jesus, that from today he becomes your Lord and Savior, lift up your hand and lift it up well. We're going to see it and then we'll pray with you. Is that hand up there? If that hand is up, please, uh, Ashes, please, you want to help my brother right there. Is there anybody else you say today you want to give your life to Jesus and start a walk with the Lord? Do not allow the enemy of our lives to deceive you. There is life in Jesus. And we need to receive Jesus for us to be able to do what is ahead of us. The life that God has given us. The assignment that he has given us. Are you there asking for the last time? You want to give your life to Jesus? Lift up your hand. We'll see it. And we're going to pray together. All right. Now, we want to say this prayer. We want to say this prayer together. Uh, just in case there are those who are there and you're feeling like, no, I don't want to stand at this point. We want to say this prayer together. So that if you're here and this becomes your very first time to say this prayer, then you want to see the leaders, the pastors, and the ushers will help you in doing that. Shall we say together, Father Lord? Let's say like, like we believe it. Father Lord, I come to you this morning. I believe I'm a sinner who needs to be forgiven. I ask you to forgive me and from this day forward make me your child. I surrender myself to you. Surrender my life to you. Everything that I am and everything that I have I give it to you. From this day onwards I am, I am born again in Jesus name. Jesus name. Thank you Lord for saving the people that you have saved this morning. We pray that in the name of Jesus uh, they will find refuge in your house and that they will grow to become everything that you have desired for them. I want to thank you and to honor you in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen.